You're such an asshole. All right, we got a question about how to build a house like Cappy did, and my recommendation to you is that you don't. So we'll go through the request, and I'll tell you why you shouldn't, and then I'll go. If you still want to do it that way, we'll go it that way. Hey, dipshit, longtime listener, a fan of your book, first-time client. Please keep my video request below anonymous and name your price. Well, wait, did you want a video? Video request. All right, well, I'm not going to mention your name or nothing. I'm looking to move out of my current leftist crap hole to a neighboring conservative state in the next coming two years and am considering pre-built versus custom-built new home options. My request of you is to provide a high-level overview of the process you went through during the planning, purchasing, designing, and building phases of your recently completed home in South Dakota. I own my current home mortgage-free, so this request would mostly focus on the challenges and nuances specific to custom-built homes starting from an empty, unrestricted land plot any recommendations or wisdom you can provide to make the process go as smoothly as possible would be immensely, immensely appreciated. Thank you for your guidance and unwavering honesty over the years. It's so desperately needed in the current zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Best regards, anonymous. That's all right. I uh, I appreciate all the evil people who have lied to generations of children that I could just simply tell the truth. And oh my God, he's great. Oh, you're just brave. I'm like, no, I hate liars. That's it. And now I've carved out a living for it. So let me go to my notes and let's do this. All right. So here's here's the process that I went through and you're going to have to go through to some, some degree or another. First, can you build on the land? You, you're going to start with an empty plot of land. All right. Is there a percolation test? Meaning can you, will it absorb um, <clears throat> sewage? Because you're going to have a, if, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're probably going to have to have a septic tank and they'll have to be pump. So make sure it can take sewage. So you run a perk test. That's the first thing you do before you buy the land. Another thing is you want to make sure that you can drill for water. I don't know if you got city water nearby or not, but if you don't, you got to drill a water. Now, if you're sitting on 300 feet of granite, um, you're, you're going to spend all your money on drilling costs. And there's other ways to get water. Uh, but I would just make sure there's a water table. You could drill a well there. So that's kind of the, the two main things I'd say when you're, you're buying your land. Also, you know, floodplain, you don't want near a swamp. Does it drain right? You buy enough acres of land, you know, it, it, it would, oh man, I love this spot of land. Oh, but there's some physical characteristics of it. Well, I can only build on that spot by the land. Otherwise it gets flooded. So common sense, things like that, I would, um, especially water, and especially if you're going to have a basement, you know, you want to make sure there ain't no water nearby. And then uh, I would honestly not build a basement if you don't need one. Um, so that's that's kind of what I would do. Uh, <clears throat> then let's say you find land. I would still encourage you to look at prefab because that's less mistakes made by a bunch of drunk sister fucking tradesmen, uh, depending on where you live. I'm just going to assume most tradesmen are, are like 93% of their day is sister fucking 6% is drinking and 1% is actually doing their fucking job. Um, <clears throat> so prefab 90% of the stuff is already made by machines. So I'm going to encourage you to maybe look at that. Of course, you're going to have to find a contractor who's skilled and certified to assemble the home. So there's that. Uh, before you pay a contractor to build your home, I would almost build your own home. I don't know what your current situation is, but if you're just a single guy, I'd strongly recommend you build your bachelor hut. Um, your house isn't going to be great or spectacular, but if you could do a lot of the work yourself, like you probably have to pay someone to pour the concrete. <clears throat> you have to pay someone to survey the land, make sure you know how far does the concrete have to go. But with a lot of research and, and work, uh, a lot of this stuff can be done by you. And um, the smaller it is, like one thing to do, you don't have to do it this way. If you just, if it's just you, well, you know, okay, why not build a cabin? A really easy way to build a cabin, you pour some concrete fillings, all right? You put a frame on the concrete fillings and then you, uh, have some jacks on it or make it that it can adjust so you can level it in case the concrete fillings go down. There's a little bit of settling or something like that. 
and, and you'd almost build the hut assuming like, yeah, I might have to like tear it down sometime. Uh, but I would, you know, go in and look at like how to build your own house because contractors are that inept that, you know, it, it is that bad. It is that bad. <clears throat> I recommend you find a used home, one that's already been built, gone through several owners. Um, but then if, if you want to do it your way, you want to custom build. Okay. So here's what you got to do. So after you find your land that you want to build it on, this is a good land, a fair land we shall call it this land you found that all right the first thing where'd my notes go uh is you need to get qualified for a construction loan all right find out how much you qualify for then that way you could get an idea of whether or not you could build your custom home the second thing is that you're going to really take a serious inventory of how much housing you need and i i don't mean to don't chintz out here either I want a room to sleep in. I want a room to record in. And I need a three-car garage. I would almost say minimum you're going to need a three-car garage. If you do this right and you're just by yourself, you will have a one-bedroom bachelor hut above a three-car garage. That's, <laughs> or maybe adjacent to, depending on where you are. But your garage should be bigger than your house. Now, maybe you got family. Maybe you got kids. I'll leave that up to you. But really sit and think about, okay, what do I need? What's going to make my life better? Like, this is going to be the house I die in. I did not go ape shit with my house, but I made sure the girl had a place. I had a place. We're out of each other's hair. And I had some views of the forest and um, uh, some adequate patio. And so I spent uh, spent on that. Um, when you are designing your house, I'll, I'll get to that actual thing. Before I forget, do it once. What I mean by doing it once, get yourself a 50-year roof. If you want to steal, get a 50-year roof. Or like in my case, I didn't go with the 50-year roof because I'm not going to outlast the 35-year roof. Okay, see what I'm saying? Uh, the flooring I got is composite and it won't have to be replaced. My patio decking is Trimbex, Timbex, something like that. I don't have to stain it. Make your house as maintenance-free as possible. It, it was, I've even looked into getting AstroTurf for, for my land. Uh, and it's way too expensive because then I wouldn't have to mow it. But that's that's what I'm thinking. So, But that's when you get to the design phase. I just wanted to say that before I forgot it. <clears throat> now, then after you find out how much you, you can qualify for, you're going to spend the next uh, couple weeks of your life finding a builder, a builder only through references. Only through references. Um, do not go on Yelp, do not go on Google, do not go on Facebook, find a developer, go into a, a home where that's developed like brand new and go and talk to those people. If you see a house you like, say, Hey, who's your developer? What's your experience has been? And if they say, Oh, you know, it's horrible. Blah, blah, blah. It was cookie cutter. There you go. Um, I have a couple friends in um, <clears throat> South Dakota now like, oh, I love my builder. That's the people you want to find. And you don't even want to break ground or sign any documents until you find someone who says, this builder was amazing. And what you want to have is turnkey, meaning they actually finished the house. And not only did they finish it, they picked up all the screws and the nails around the property, which, which is a hallmark move of sister fucking a tradesman. They just leave all the metal stuff around the house because they want you to have flats, right? <clears throat> Those are really your sixth grade mentality, sister fucking tradesmen. Um, so search, you you see some, and I'd almost go with your architecture, like, oh, I, I like that architecture. Well, that builder can build that style of architecture and just knock on the door. Hey, <clears throat> I know it's dumb, but I'm building in the area. Who built your house and do you like them? And that's that's a lot of work. That's a lot of groundwork. But then you'll find when they say this guy was amazing, he carried us through, uh, asked us all the questions. All You'll know the difference. And nine out of ten times, like, yeah, he's too busy fucking his sister. Because, again, that's what tradesmen do. And this one, this one didn't. This one was, you know, he asked us before he installed it. Da, da, da. We got there. And just here's another thing. Go to a construction site. Go walk, you're like, oh, there's some builders over there. And then just 
look around. They say, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm looking for nails. Why? Because I'm going to build a home. I'm seeing if you guys are the type to leave nails laying around. Oh, you are. Is that your sister over there? Oh, it must be. Uh, so that's a lot of boots on the ground work you're going to do. But that is the number one most important thing of all this process. I'm telling you right there. Because if you find the right builder, they'll take care of the rest of it. So <clears throat> you'll get some references. I still want you to Google search the hell out of them. Particularly look up whether they've been sued. See if their LLC has been around for a while or their company's been around for a while. If they just started up the, I have 10 years experience, but their LLC has only been on the Secretary of State for one year. That means that they got sued out of existence and had to start a new LLC. Um, and that that's where 95% of your work would go is finding a builder. Now, <clears throat> let's assume you got a builder and he only fucks his sister 45% of the time. That's a pretty good builder. That's a pretty good builder, by the way. That's pretty good for American builders. Now you can start designing your house, all right? And you're going to have to employ a draftsman. Now you'll find a draftsman usually at a housing supply store. Uh, in South Dakota, it's Connects and ProSource. Those are the two. Um, you'll have to find other, um, depends on where you live. And usually they have a draftsman. Now you're going to have to pay maybe a thousand, maybe 2000. And it depends on how many um, <clears throat> rewrites you do. But what I would do, and I even saved it because it was kind of personal to me. I spent days sitting down and figuring out what kind of house I wanted. And I had to sit and think, and I drew, and I was very precise. I even got the graph paper. I said, oh, I'd like to have this. And if you put in your time and effort into that, the draftsman We'll be able to add things like the width of walls. Don't worry about width of walls, but, you know, sit there. Well, we spent time, man, going to open house. Like, how big of a room is adequate for a, for a bedroom? 14 by 14 feet. That's that's pretty good for a, for a bedroom. A little smaller. You don't have room for, like, drawers and dressers and things. Too much bigger. Like, this is awfully big for a room that I sleep in most of the time. Um, think about things like, do you want a walk-in closet? Uh, do you want yourself a, a bathtub? <clears throat> the plumbing. All right. We have in the master shower. Master means that's where the owners live, the husband and wife in, in, in the olden days. Now it's just you and the, the other, the gal that you're banging. Uh, for most of your existence, you will have, um, shared one shower head with the love of your life and you might love them. You're like, get your ass out of my way. And I am not joking. The one of maybe even the thing I like the most about my house is that I got two separate shower heads. Like that's yours over there. Woman, you get over there and having their own thing for shampoo out of pure evil masculinity. What I did was I gave her the exact same shelving for her, um, you know, shampoos and conditioners and all that as I had. Cause I just got Irish spring and head and shoulders. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see you fit your 40 bottles on that. Cause I'm a dick, but it, that is wonderful. Like, yeah, she got her shower. I got my shower not bumping into each other. That's, that's something worth it. Uh, but those type of things, <clears throat> think about what you want, what's practical, what's useful, not, not, oh my God, it'd be great to have a indoor swimming pool. No, it wouldn't. And then draw it, take measurements, go to different, um, cause here's the thing. You're putting all this investment and time into it. Make sure you do it right the first time. So, okay. You think, oh yeah, a 12 by 12 foot room for a pool table. No, that won't work. You need, you need to, a pool table needs at least six feet around it all over the place so you could shoot pool. So a lot of thought and effort should go into <clears throat> your design. Then you give it to a draftsman. The draftsman can turn that into a blueprint that a builder can then operate on. All right. So then you got your draft. And then what you got to do is you got to get a quote. You need to get a quote for labor. You need to get a quote for materials. The, the, the sister fuckers of South Dakota, I, I, the first guy I went with, he was giving me a quote like, yeah, 350000 We could do it for 350000 I'm like, well, okay, that's within my budget. I could afford that. Okay, all right. Yeah. He wasn't including materials. And so then when the materials price was that, I said, I thought you could do this for the, and then it went up to like 600 or two, five, 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 some, some I couldn't afford. And I'm like, really? So I just wasted all that time 
because they so you need to make sure all quotes you're given like when the builder when he pulls his dick out of his sister's mouth say hey jessup got a question for you does the quote you gave me does that include material like everything everything the one i give to the bank <clears throat> and hopefully they say yeah that should but you know we're waiting on the materials quote to further refine that figure and then hopefully when you get the total quote labor and materials total cost it will be less than what your construction loan is, what you're qualified for. <clears throat> All right, here's then where you got to be on their ass. And if you have a good builder, you won't have to be on their ass as much. But I would still audit. And I know these builders out there like, oh, I hate it when Karen's to audit my work. I'm sorry. You guys have such a shitty reputation. And you're also a bunch of sister fuckers that you do need babysitting. You, you do need babysitting. Now, hopefully it won't be that bad. Hopefully it won't. You get the right builder. <clears throat> but if you don't, you got to be on their, on their ass like, like glue or something like that. And so uh, your bank will come up with a construction loan agreement and they will um, advance funds as different projects are verified to be completed. Now, sometimes your banker won't be on top of that. <clears throat> and so you have every right to be like, hey, before we advance those funds, I'm going to go down to the, the building. I'm going to go down to the construction site and make sure the concrete is poured. I'm going to go down there and make sure that is done. Right. So in the ideal world, you're going to be living nearby where your house is being built. So you could go down there and I'd start off going down daily. What are we doing today? OK. Now, what a lot of builders will do is they'll find some good things on your property like raw dirt that's your dirt that's not his dirt and that contractor or builder will sell off your dirt or use it on another project no 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 that's my dirt put the dirt over there or flatten out that area build a berm up over there <clears throat> i guess rocks are a big deal in south dakota you're like oh yeah he was pulling out all these rocks and probably selling over 300 a piece i didn't know rocks were a big deal i'm like those are my rocks you put them over there you you are dealing with middle schoolers. That's how simple it is. And so he makes sure that they put the foundation in. What are we doing today? And we're putting in that. So your general contractor is the main guy who should be finding the subcontractors, meaning the plumbers and the framers and the roofers and the concrete pourers and the electricians and all that. All right. You could fire any one of them at any time, including the general contractor. So you go in there. And you see the, the roofers just throwing nails on the driveway and like, get rid of them, all of them now, or you're firing that one guy and I don't want to see any more freaking nails here. And that's a conversation. I'm not joking. Right off the bat, you can screen. I should put this at like step 5.5. You go right to the general contractor. Like, I'm not paying you if I find one nail. You're picking up the place. You're not leaving garbage or all that other stuff because that's what middle school sister fucking tradesmen do. All right. And if they're like, well, I, 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 okay, bye, get out of here. You're not, you're not the contractor. Like you, you that's like some of you, like, I don't want to see any nails. I don't want to see any whatever. It's picked up. <clears throat> I'm not walking around after I open up my new house, picking up a bunch of nails or plastic or whatever else they happen to have. Um, <clears throat> so this contract that you're going to have with the, the bank, uh, be, okay, we're going to advance these funds. It's pretty standard boiler template. But before these funds are advanced, like, okay, are, did, did they submit a bill for wiring for electricity? Go to your house. Is the wiring in? Okay. Does it work? <clears throat> is it the way you want it? And that's another thing. If you're custom building a house, and now this is, this is in fairness to all contractors and builders, your vision is not the exact same that, that you have. They might have a, um, a blueprint, but like, let's say you got, oh no, I want, I want railings on both sides of the stairwell. Uh, no, no, don't fill in that wall there. You know, it, it, like walk through like, okay. Oh, don't put sheet rock there. No, no, I don't want that there. Or I do want that there. Um, one I, I had I'm like, no, not that siding. You did the siding wrong and put on this siding. Like they got to do it over again. So you're always checking in on it, man. You're always checking in on it and they may not like that too bad. That industry is about as reputable as bankers, all right? Too bad. You've, you've proven yourself that you have to be babysat. <clears throat> and then here, I would also, um, this might actually be worth it to have a lawyer come in and draft up a, a 
contract. Now, I know how this would look. I would even talk to your banker who's done construction. I was like, I want to make sure that they like pick up the property. I want to make sure that, um, <clears throat> well, another thing is you're going to have a window. Like when you get the construction loan, it's going to be at a certain percent interest. Then they take that balance at the end of the construction and they roll it over into a 30-year mortgage or 15-year mortgage. That mortgage interest rate will be set for a certain amount of time. But if your contractors are unprofessional and bad, they won't have the house finished in time. And all of a sudden, interest rates could be going up. That's happened for the past two years where it's like people are building their homes and the interest rate could have gone up by half a percent or, or a percent or so, which drastically increases the um, <clears throat> your final mortgage. So either through the mortgage broker, or not the mortgage broker, the builder, of the, the uh, bank that you have the construction loan through, see if they know a lawyer, have it written in there like, yeah, you got to pick this up. Yeah, it's going to, everything's going to be done. <clears throat> It will be done by this time. And if it's not done by this time, you will incur the financing charges that you can pay points down to get it down to a certain interest rate. Like that's the interest rate. It's going to be done by that time. If it's not and the interest rate goes up, you got to pay points down so that I get myself whatever 3.2 interest rate. Although I guess those aren't the interest rates now. It. <clears throat> do you see how much risk you're taking on? Do you see? Um, so there's some other things that I would just talk to, to your banker and say, all right, what do we got to worry about? What are some of the problems? Uh, I would then have a second inspector come. They're going to have the county inspector come in. The bank is going to have their own inspector come in. You go get your third inspector and say, all right, what's wrong with this house? Anything missing here? <clears throat> you don't sign anything until the inspector is like, oh, that does that. That's not working. I mean, I literally found bolts loose in my garage. Like it's, it's, you just, you have to, and you're going to, and I would also add, go through it with a fine tooth comb yourself. Then, as I said before, you, at any time, you fire your subcontractors, you fire your general contractor. And you make, if you get that into the contract that you have your lawyer draft up, say you're signing this and this is how it's going to be. And I think if you have that stuff up going forward, a good contractor, like, he won't worry. Like, yeah, we got that. Well, we'll we understand. You got a bad contractor, they won't sign it. They'll leave. What do you mean pick up nails? What do you think we are, eighth graders? <laughs> and then they'll go and they'll buy the truck and the housing crash will come. And they'll be like, I can't afford it. And like, there's some noose for sale over at Menards. Get some oil. I don't know what you'd use it for. Wife left you again. There's a country song named after it for you. Um, so that's that's what I would do. It's just you got to be on their ass and babysit these kids. But the the number one thing you can do is spend, I don't care if it takes you three weeks. You're going to spend way more time. I spent way more time. Now, of course, I had a way lower mortgage doing all the fixing and finishing work because they never finished up. I never built for it either. So it's like, okay, and I did a better job. So I I would you just get yourself a good builder and make sure because that two, three weeks you go around and they oh yeah, Fred Fredson of Fredson Construction. Oh yeah, that's the guy you want. You you want him. Like, oh yeah, I swear by him. And usually they'll be booked out. Well, too bad. That's worth it. But that two, three weeks of doing some research is gonna be, I'll save you months at the end. And then you in theory, you should be able to walk in, key works, everything works, you know, like hey. Weren't you supposed to put up the towel racks? <laughs> huh? I can't hear you. I'm fucking my sister. So there you go. Any super chats? We got three super chats. Bob, <clears throat> two bucks. I start to believe you hate tradesmen. No, I I, I respect good tradesmen. It, it's a tragedy. Like tradesmen actually have a real trade and a skill. I can't wire a house. I can do a little bit of electrical wiring, but not the heavy shit. And it's not, it's not a question of their skill. It's a question of their professionalism, showing up on time, doing the job right. And they don't. It's some weird thing like, oh, if you're a tradesman, you got to fit this stereotype. And they do. 
But if you get a good builder, they're usually like, no, they and they've already got their crew. They got their subcontractors they trust and they rely upon. And those guys are usually going to even be cheaper because they do it right the first time. They're not tearing up floorboards or whatever else have you. But yeah, but generally as a group, yeah, he's like, you're a tradesman. I'm like, you're not dating my daughter. If I had one, I'd be like, oh, <clears throat> you're a tradesman. Cool. How much in debt are you for your joke of it? Like, what's your BAC right now? Oh, you're a pothead. Oh, okay. Frank and Foot, five bucks. Should I add an eighth job to part time college and four hour job? Oh, should I add an eight hour job to part time college and four hour job? <clears throat> part time college? Yeah. Part time college, part time job? Yeah. Yes, you should. All should be doing 16 hour days. Oh, that's so unfair. Yep, it sure is. Tell me at the end of it. Steven Heinze. Five bucks, Cappy. Thoughts on Elon Musk saying remote work is immoral because it's not fair to blue-collar workers. Oh, Elon Musk is wrong. He's allowed to be wrong. He dated Amber Heard, right? He's allowed to be wrong on things. It's the nature of blue-collar work. That's probably why blue-collar workers get paid more. <clears throat> All right, that's it. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. See you guys later. Toodles.